welcome to Fuzzy Love Knot Podcast. I am Nina, and um, I had the camera set up a little bit different today, so please excuse me if I uh, am trying to get some stuff <laughs> figured out. Um, okay, so this is the Fuzzy Love Knots Podcast. Welcome, hello to all the new viewers. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining us on the Ravelry group. Um, I am Nina, like I said, <laughs> and you can find me on Instagram as nlafontaine, and you can find me, the group, and my patterns on Ravelry under Fuzzy Love Knots. Um, so yes, it is a lovely summer morning in Santiago today and my neighbors are doing construction like normal so you can enjoy the symphony of power tools and hammering <laughs> um, but other than that it's really nice today it's a little breezy and it's sunny um, lately we've been having in the states you'd call it like June gloom where the end of spring you get like this unseasonably warm weather and then when summer rolls around you get a little bit of cloudiness like usually at the beginning of June like halfway through June so um, we've kind of been getting some cloudy cooler days where you gotta throw a shawl on and you gotta you know put a sweater on but today it's really nice and, and I think it's gonna be really warm today so um, so that's really because I, I like the warmer weather. Um, a few things. First, uh, before we get to the knitting, so I should actually put down this headband that I'm playing with. <laughs> um, a few things first. Um, the giveaway winner. So the giveaway closed yesterday at midnight um, Eastern time is when I closed it. And this morning I compiled all the names from the Ravelry group and I compiled all of the entries from Instagram um, into a spreadsheet and then I went on random number generator and I drew a name and uh, so that's how I that's how I did that um, I did check each and every entry to make sure you followed the rules <laughs> and um, so the number it drew was number five um, and that ended up being Elizabeth from Orlando and that's Elizabeth knits two I've already PM'd her on Ravelry so she already knows she won so she won the giveaway that has all of these goodies in it I'm not gonna go through it again just because I already went through it and I posted on Instagram a whole bunch but yay Elizabeth and the prompt she um, the prompt she follow uh, bleh. the prompt she answered on the Ravelry group was, "What is your favorite way to showcase variegated yarn, or your favorite pattern that showcases variegated yarn?" Um, because the yarn in the giveaway pack is a variegated skein, and I always have trouble, you know, figuring out how to utilize. Um, skeins that have multiple colors in them you know what's the best way to showcase that yada yada so I was curious so that's what that's why I chose that prompt <laughs> and she said that she likes to use them in hats um, and that she kind of gets a kick out of that so I think that this yarn would make a lovely hat if that's what you want to use it for and um, congratulations so I've PM'd you so if you see this before you check your PMs on Ravelry, please get back to me with your um, mailing information. I will try to get that out to you before the weekend. Second is um, Jenny and I guess Devin, because he's been on every single week, <laughs> from Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. Um, they are having a make two along until the end of January and um, I just wanted to let you guys know because they have some really awesome prizes for the craft along and um, 
And it's an awesome podcast. So if you're not watching that already, you should be. And um, I'm going to enter some things into it because it looks like I'm going to be done with my tank top in time. And so I think that um, my... Um, my dotted rays and my tank top go perfectly together and that's the whole theme of the make two along right is to construct a outfit and really curate your outfit whether you sew a dress and then knit something to go with it or something like that so I think those two items go really well together so I'm going to enter those into Jenny's make two along also Andrew Sue knits Andy is having a shawl along. Um, the hashtag for that is shawl along 2016. If you want to follow it on Instagram, there's tons of photos up already. Um, and I'm going to enter my dotted rays into that along as well. And that's going through the end of March. So if you guys really love knitting shawls or if there's a pattern you've really just been wanting to knit and you just kind of need some encouragement to do that, um, Go ahead and check out that thread in the Andre Sue Knits uh, group on Ravelry because um, there's lots of chatter and she's giving away prizes for chatter too, I think. So um, it's really fun to just check it out and you can enter as many shawls in that in this three month time as you want. So I have some shawls that I really would like to knit or that I need to clear off my needles. So this is like the perfect time and incentive to do that. So Dotted Rays is going in that thread this week. And then hopefully I can get my mother-in-law's shawl done soon. And then that will go in there. And then I really want to finish my doodler. And then that can go in. So it's really good motivation to get some of these things done. Okay, I think that's all I have for like announcement -y things. So let's go on to FOs. This is going to be a really short uh, podcast because I only worked on like one thing this week with two things this week. And so, and I haven't really spun, well I've spun, but I've been plying and it's like super fine chain ply singles. So it's like, I'm not going to show you that. There's not much not much to see. So I blocked my dotted rays, which I showed you my dotted rays last week, but it wasn't blocked and it was all squishy and kind of small. So I blocked it and look how beautiful it turned out. It's ginormous. It's like super drapey and it really opened up. It's larger... Um, across the top lengthwise it's larger than my exploration station by a lot you can see that the um the garter stitch really loosened up the eyelets are like huge which i really love and i ended up kind of pulling out the points on the bottom a little bit not a lot i kind of just took my finger and you know pulled them out a little bit so that is how that turned out i absolutely adore it. I am going to wear this all the time. I mean, look how huge it is. It's like, here, hold on. This. That's how big it is. It's like really, 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 really huge. Oh my gosh. And this camera is like flipping everything. So I'm totally going to be like holding some stuff down on purpose. But that's how huge it is. Um, I know I'm not really the kind of person who wears shawls like across my back, but lately I totally could see me like wearing this across my back because it's just so ginormous. And this comes like way down past my belly button. Like it's just perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna wear this for a little bit because I love it. And it's so drapey and just like so pretty. Okay, so that is my dotted rays again. Like love the way the bind off is the colors everything it's just it's just beautiful ah, I would knit another one of these like in a heartbeat um the other thing that I finished this week is the front half of my tank top so I'll hold it up so you can see it, but it's kind of long, so the whole thing won't be in frame. But, so this is my, uh, my 
my Fruity Fruity Tea. It's a pattern by me. It's one of my patterns. And this is the front half. The pattern itself is a very boxy um, t-shirt tank top. And um, I modified this one that I'm knitting because um, I don't have the original sample for the pattern. It is hanging on display in a local yarn shop. And so I wanted one for myself. <laughs> so this one, um, as you can see, um, silly camera, okay. Um, I'll hold it out so you can see. The waist shaping right here, I knit quite a bit before I started the waist shaping. I did a few repeats of the waist shaping. So the waist shaping starts like here. I did a few repeats of the waist shaping, which I, en I think ended up being around 12 rows, which took us to like here, um, decreasing like every three or four rows. So pretty gradual. And then from here to here, I decreased every other row for a much more sharper decrease. And you can really see that on the edge there. This edge is hanging really straight because this is garter stitch. So this edge is not curling at all. So you can really see the steep increase. And so then the armholes will start about here probably. And then this will all be armhole. And what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to, um, once it's all seamed, I'm going to pick up stitches around the outside and then do like an eye cord around the, around the armhole. Just so it's, I mean, I, I like the way this, the garter stitch edge gives a really nice finish, but if I want to um, leave a little bit more room in my armhole, then I, I use a garter stitch selvage edge. I don't know if you can see that, which means just on the beginning and end of every row, you knit the first stitch. And for me, that just makes seaming a lot easier because you can really see the, um, see the little valley the little bar in between each stitch that you're supposed to pick up to seam. So, um, so because I use a garter stitch salvage, selvage edge, when you get to here and there's no garter, if you want to start, you know, if you want a bigger armhole, it just looks a little bit messy, I find. So I'm going to pick up all the stitches and do an eye cord, an attached eye cord um, edging. Um, yeah, but I held this up today and it like, it fits perfectly. It's going to be a really nice like boat neck, which is what I want. It, this is not going to have too much of a sleeve. It's actually going to like go right to where it needs to be. The shaping fits right up underneath my bust. It kind of tucks up in here in the side, just like I wanted. So there's going to be um, negative ease in the chest bodice area and then around the stomach and the hip. There's lots of positive ease and it, um, it turned out perfectly. I'm really loving it. I like how it's not totally smooth. You can kind of see the, the texture of the, it's a wool silk linen blend. So you can kind of see the textures very um, uneven, which I like. And I am holding the yarn double. You can see how uneven the yarn is. Um, I used about half of the skeins for this one um, piece. So um, I'm going to continue to knit the other half on the same skeins. And because I'm holding double, I'm not alternating skeins or anything like that. It's kind of useless. <laughs> Um, because it's going to stripe how it's going to stripe. I'm not worried about pooling or anything like that. And because I'm holding it double, it's naturally just kind of marling on its own. Um, and it's so soft. Like, it really fluffed up when I blocked it. Um, I didn't stretch it at all when I blocked it. I just kind of smoothed it and pinned the sides so that they'd be really, um, nice and even for me to seam. So I'm going to start the other side this week. 
Um, I'm going for the day to um, Vigna in two weeks, and so I'm hoping that I can get the other half done by then, which I think I should be able to. And because um, Vigna's on the coast, so even you know in the summer it ha it has potential to be cold <laughs> and cloudy. But I think that that tank top is like the perfect thing to wear for a day at the beach um, with like a pair of, just a pair of shorts or something. So I'm gonna wear that and I'm gonna bring this and I'm gonna be like matchy matchy, awesome, awesome. That's my goal. <laughs> so the other thing that I've been working on this week is um, my new sock pattern. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this a few times. Um, the pattern is all written. I just need to finish the socks and take pictures of them. And um, I think that this pattern could be out. It's already been tested it too. So I think this pattern could be out like next week. <laughs> so um, this one is done except for the heel. I need to put the heel in. And um, But I will show you on my hand like... Maria from Stitch and Speed and likes to do. So I don't have a name for these yet, but it probably will be like a Spanish or Mapuche name. Because lately I've been naming my patterns um, versions, not full Mapuche words, but like uh, my interpretation of like Mapuche words. And the Mapuche are the native people of Chile, like southern Chile. So um, here's the stitch pattern on the sock. Ah, angle for the camera. <laughs> here's the stitch pattern for the sock. It's this really cool zigzag kind of um, current type pattern. It's all done with slip slip knits, knit two together and lifted bar increases, which is not a bar increase, sorry, a lifted increase. So it's really unusual because you don't see lifted increases that often actually. Um, and it really creates this really cool kind of pattern. And I love how like the stitches go like this. It really does look like water current, I think. So it'll probably be some variation on a river word or something like that. The Mapuche. And the pattern is written um, for toe up, but you know, if you're a sock knitter, you can easily adapt it to be cuff down. Um, it's both charted and written directions. So toe up with a more this more rounded toe. And then I give directions for an afterthought heel, but you could easily, you know, at that point insert a fish lips kiss heel or if you're knitting cuff down, you could easily do a gusset, heel turn and gusset, whatever you like. And then the ribbing is patterned and charted as well. So it flows, the pattern flows into the ribbing. And it's a really nice stretchy rib too. Um, sometimes I find if it's a patterned rib, it's not really stretchy and so it's hard to like hug on your foot. I use a Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. So it is surprisingly stretchy, but that also means that sometimes you get like, it doesn't look the neatest. But I tried them on and they, they don't fit me because they're not knit for me. So this is another one of these. The sample is not going to be my sample. It's going to be going to another home. But, um, but that's okay. <laughs> so there's this one. I started the, get out of there. I started the cuff on this one last night. So this, these guys will be finished today. I'm using a yarn that is local to me. It's made out of Chilean Corydale. It's locally dyed from a yarn shop um, not too far from me, really close to me actually. And um, hold on, this is sliding. There we go. Maybe that will slide. Um, from a yarn shop really close to me, sorry. And um, it is a singles yarn. 
So it's a single yarn that's a fingering weight. It doesn't really have much spring to it because it's a, you know, a low twist singles. But I've knit lots of socks out of this stuff and, um, like, given it to, fa given them to family members and stuff like that. And I've never had anybody come back to me asking me to darn any holes or fix anything that's torn. It's non-super wash, so obviously if you wear them around the house or whatever, they will felt on the bottom, but I'm not too worried about that. I gave explicit directions not to put them in the washer, so I think that they've been hand washing them, and um, I know that my family members wear them and that they like them, so, so that's pretty good. So these will be finished today. Hopefully I'll take pictures of them tomorrow. And um and the pattern will be up. Maybe the pattern will be up this weekend. I don't know. I don't know. So that's that. That is like all I've been working on. I've been I worked on my tank top like a mad woman. And I worked on these socks like all day the last couple days. So, oh, and I've been blocking like crazy because last week I showed you guys a bunch of stuff and none of it was blocked. <laughs> so, um, my husband's hat, I blocked that. The Marigold Cal um, that I knit for my sister in law blocked that. that those are both drying in the living room right now I blocked this I blocked my headband oh yeah I'll show you my headband this is the bow headband I showed you last week um, knit out of some Regia tweed I have it right here actually here we go here's the Regia tweed that I knitted out of trend and classic there's the numbers. Oh gosh, this camera is so excited. <laughs> Cause I don't, I don't know which one's which. Which one's which? Which one's the lot number and which one's the color number? I think the second one's the color number. I don't know. There you go. But it's the cream with the neon tweety bits. Oh, okay. So when I washed this. I don't know if you can tell now, but it's not the same color anymore because all of the little neon tweety bits bled onto the white yarn. So this looks like way more pinky cream yarn than this does. I mean, this is not like a white yarn anyways. This is obviously a cream yarn, but um, I don't know how hair gets on everything. But this, when I washed it, there's hair on this too. Oh my gosh. I mean, I know it's a headband, but come on. Like this little tweety bit, all of this around it, camera isn't really picking it up that well, is like pink. And the orange, all the stuff around the, the orange bits are like orange. So if you have this and you're going to use it, the little tweety bits do bleed. So I don't know if you want to give it like a vinegar bath the first time you wash it or what. And I washed it in cold water. I did not wash it in warm water. But here it is. And when I blocked it, I just just kind of smushed it and pinned it so that the edges would be the shape that I wanted, kind of round. And you can see the texture really nicely, and the eyelets are so pretty. And it did grow a little bit, but not too much. I mean, you know. I'm not going to put it on, but it'll be so cute. Um, the first time I wear it, I'll make sure the knot is in a place that I like. And I'll tie a square knot so that the two ends are going the same direction, the way that I want them to. And then I'll just keep it tied. And then I can just slip it on and off my head. Um, I think that's it. So, um, two last little things. There are two new podcasts out. And I'm really, really happy about them. So, um, the first one is Amy, my friend Amy, who's the dyer behind Stranded Dye Works. Um, 
succumbed to the, I don't know, the need to tell people about things and recorded a podcast. Um, and she just posted it yesterday <laughs> and, um, I was so excited about it. I was like, yeah, I get to sit and watch Amy Wine knit and listen to her beautiful voice and all that. So that's a stranded podcast. Um, she is in the UK and she's a wonderful knitter and a wonderful spinner. And obviously her yarn and her fiber that she dyes is beautiful and wonderful. So um, you can go ahead and check that out. You can watch it either on her blog, Stranded Blog, or you can find her on YouTube by searching Stranded Podcast. And then um, Brittany from the Spun Fiber Company. Here, I'll show my tote. Spun Fiber Co. Um, started a podcast also. So that's the spun cast. Kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> and, um, she is the dyer behind the spun fiber company, which is really cool. Um, a couple months ago, she launched a Kickstarter campaign to help fund, um, a new endeavor She's gathering locally sourced wool from small flocks uh, in her area. And she's in New Jersey, I believe. So all kinds of small flocks in New Jersey gathering the wool, which normally these farmers would not use the wool. They need to shear their sheep because they need to shear their sheep. And um, she's buying the wool from them, having it milled, and then dyeing it herself. She's dyeing the yarn. So, um, so she's creating a need and a market for this wool that normally would not be used or the, it's not profitable for the, um, for the farmers to sell their wool usually. So, which I think is really awesome. She has lots of local small breeds that maybe would be, uh, that are maybe on the endangered list, stuff like that. Um, so the whole thing to me is just really exciting. Um, I have some, I should have brought it up, but I didn't. <laughs> I have some of her yarn down there um, in a sport weight in a lavender color, which is really gorgeous. That actually matches some of my hand spun perfectly. So I'm going to pair that with it in a shawl. That's coming up soon. It's all caked up and ready to go. I already know what pattern I'm going to use and everything. But I have to get some other stuff off the needle before I cast that on. So you can check out Spuncast. Um, and Stranded. So just some more, more podcasts for you guys to watch because, you know, podcasts. Everybody loves podcasts. <laughs> and um, one last thing, um, Tiny Paper Foxes is hosting a giveaway for my patterns. So if you've been wanting to get a hold of some of my patterns, it's a great chance to um, maybe do that. Um, they have a thread up in their Ravelry group. Um, and you can just follow the prompts she has there. But, um, it's all four of my patterns. And she's going to choose a, well, it's four patterns. So she's going to choose four winners and then they get to pick which pattern of mine that they would like. Um, which is really fun. So I love Jenny and I love Devin and... Um, they're so much fun to watch and to get to hang out with every week. And um, so um, nice to be able to do that. So I think that's it for this week. It's really short. I think it's like 30 minutes. Um, but I don't know. Certain things just got a lot of my time. So I don't have lots of stuff to show. But this week, hopefully, I'll do some spinning. Um, there will be a new pattern out. And hopefully, I have some more info to show you next week. So I hope you guys have a good week. And um, my brain just stopped working. That's okay. Have a good week. Have fun. Happy knitting.